everybody. I'm Marsha Parker from The Horror Show here at Mad Monster Arizona party time, right? And I'm here with Mark Patton, and you all may know him from Nightmare on Elm Street 2. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. It's nice to see you. Are you having fun at Mad Monster? Oh, I am. I'm having a blast. I love Mad Monster. I just did the Mad Monster in South Carolina, so I love Evan's shows. The people are really friendly, and it's got a really good vibe. So, yeah, I love coming here, and I love the hotel. It's amazing. Yeah. And I got to see your panel, and I want to say, like, you did an excellent job on your panel. I thought it was funny and informative and great. Well, thank you so much. I, I actually doing the panels was my favorite uh, part of these shows uh, because you can bestow information on people and have a good time at the uh, at the same time and make everybody feel really comfortable with themselves, which I think is the most important thing for our community, for the horror community, because we're all just a bunch of freaks and geeks when we get down to it. <laughs> That is very true. Now, um, I was doing a little research on you, and I was really excited to see one of your first roles that you did was when you were 18, and it was on Broadway, correct? That's correct. I was in uh, a show called Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, which was also then filmed as a movie. The mm -hmm. cast was uh, Sandy Dennis, Karen Black, Kathy Bates, Cher, and myself. And I want to say a happy 71st birthday to Cher. Her birthday was yesterday. And when we made that movie, she was 37, and I, I remember thinking, oh, she's so nice for an old person. So, you know, <laughs> it all just rolls on by. Right? <laughs> and how was it to work with Cher and Kathy Bates? I feel like that would be really intimidating. Oh, it, it was, it was life-changing. Yeah. I mean, literally, it was two amazing years. And Robert Altman was, was perhaps one of the best film directors in the world, so... I got to meet everybody, and the, the Rolling Stones, David Bowie, I just anybody that you can imagine in the world that was famous at that time came to see us, so it was great. And Cher, I love Cher. Yeah. Who doesn't love Cher? I mean, if she, you don't love Cher, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> My thoughts, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about A Nightmare on Elm Street, which is one of my favorites, too, because it is so different from this series. So how was your experience going through that? Oh, it was fantastic, actually. You know, it, the... Uh, it's amazing the amount of people that come up to the table and say, you know, I know everybody hates Nightmare on Elm Street too, but I love it. So I get like a constant stream of that. The tide has sort of changed on it. It's an outlier for sure. Right. And of course, if you know the history of Nightmare on Elm Street, at the time my movie was made, there were no rules. So uh, that only happened, really came into its own on the third one. So I'm, I'm very proud of the movie. I think it stands up well mm -hmm. it's character driven so I think it's dark and scary and the, the music's beautiful and so I'm very proud of it listen I'm going to Paris and London Milan uh, I'm going all over the world with this movie so I'm going to be honored by the New York Film Festival in a couple of weeks uh, at Lincoln Center and so hey it's like it's a trust fund for Michael Freddy to me so right. yeah I love it Right, and um, I remember in your panel you were talking about your relationship with Robert England, and could you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, sure. Robert and I, I, I actually knew Robert before. I, I had screen tested to play Glenn, so uh -huh. I, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but actually Robert talks about it quite a bit in his panels and in my new documentary, Scream Queen, where Robert was actually a little afraid of me because I had come off these really big jobs. So yeah. everybody's like, oh, what was it like to work with Robert England? And Robert England will tell you, it's like, oh my God, what was it like to work with Mark Patton? <laughs> so, but I love Robert. I think he's a wonderful actor yeah. and we are good friends. So, yeah. you know, and God love him. I mean, he became the Bella Lugosi of this generation. So, yeah. you know, he did okay. Yeah. And tell us about your documentary, because I hear, and I remember you were saying that it is coming out on Netflix, and you are going to a bunch of festivals, and, and I know it's definitely going to be something that people cannot miss. Because oh, sure. The documentary is called Scream, Comma, Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. And it really is about the 80s and what happened in the 80s through the lens of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. So it's a social documentary. It's very hard-hitting. I'll just tell you, I had like uh, we have twenty about twenty lawyers work on it, so that tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> right. It was I thought it was going to be like six weeks and ten thousand dollars, and you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars later and three and a half years, this is what yeah. this has become of it. It's wonderful. It's very hard hitting, but it's funny, and um, a lot of people tell a lot of lies and they get caught in them, and it's always that's always fun. So I think the fans will love it. It's yeah. just a different perspective on on Nightmare on Elm Street. What does it feel like to be known as the first male screen queen? Well, it's funny, you know, because like it's uh, it's interesting to watch people 
like their gender things right. because there's so many people who insist and it's generally like straight guys who will come in and say like no he's not a scream queen he's the scream king yeah and they keep saying <laughs> scream king he's a, but every year it's like i'm listed as one of the top scream queens in the world but like people magazine and all that kind of thing. and it's and it's fun to me yeah you know? when every time i beat heather Lam langenkamp i feel good about myself <laughs> she, that one year was jamie lee curtis was number one i was number two and heather was three yeah so we dined on out of that <laughs> But I'm here with like PJ Souls, and yeah. I know the real screen queens. I'm going to interview Linnea Quigley next week in Chicago. Yeah. And so I know all the real girls. So yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm, I wear it proudly. You should. You really should. Because I think it is a really cool thing. And especially these days, like, there is no gender rules anymore. And I love that, about, especially in horror, because then you can just be who you want to be and, and who cares about anything else. Oh, absolutely. It's like the, the secret to life is, like, relaxing into who you really are and enjoying it, you know? Yeah. And let everybody else take care of themselves. Yes, yes. And most people who are, like, coming down on you, they just have problems of their own. Yes. You know, so just stay out of their way. I don't know if you can talk about it, but I know you do have a movie coming out soon. I right? have a, actually I have a couple of movies coming out. I have the new Amityville film is coming out. And uh, <laughs> also I just did a movie with Melissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp. Mm -hmm. And we're getting ready to do actually another one. And uh, I do have two television projects, which are pretty big, that I'm really not allowed to talk about. Oh, okay. But That's you can you figure out what they are yeah. because, they, like, just... <laughs> Look at this, and then you'll and you'll know where I'm going. But yeah, th things are starting to really, uh, you know, bloom for me again, which is really interesting and fun. I just yeah. let it happen holistically, and you yeah. know, I, if people ask me, I say yes, and that's that's what's been happening. So it's well, fun. Well, you definitely had a really cool career because there was that break between um, from um, Elm Street to now. Right. But I think it was really fascinating because you. You go to Mexico and you, you become an interior decorator and you have your own gallery and you're living your life and, and you're like, you know what? I'm ready to go back. Well, you know, it's, a, it's so funny because they actually came and found me. That's the, the, for me, that's the most magical thing is like, when I was talking about it in my panel, it's like, we all have that voice of regret inside of ourselves about like the road not taken. Yeah. It's like, what would a, you know, I had friends who became, you know, billionaires, really. I mean... Sarah Jessica Parker rented a room from me. Robert Downey Jr. was my dog walker. <laughs> so those are friends, you know. Right. Or she, and you see them and you go, like, that could have been me. Yeah. And so it haunts you. So I'd always think, well, something more is going to happen. And then I think I'm delusional. And then one day, Never Sleep Again came and found me. And I was on a dirt road in Mexico. And now I'm sitting here in Arizona with you being interviewed. So, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah, it just goes to show it's never too late. Follow your dreams and just enjoy life the way it's meant to be. I had a friend who was nominated for an Academy Award when she was in her 80s. And, <laughs> uh, awesome. yeah, and she was my acting teacher's wife. And she, uh, you know, I remember when she was younger saying, I'm going to, you know, be a serious actress. And I was like, like what day, you know? <laughs> and anyway, so June, her name is June Squibb and she was nominated for the Academy Award for Nebraska. And her thing is, there aren't any rules. Right. Don't let anybody tell you that there are, because there aren't, especially right. in show business. Yep. It's all, there's always a miracle that comes through. And so be the miracle, you know? Yeah. And really, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to, to sit with me today and, and share your life with us and, and our fans. And you're just a true testament for a lot of people out there going, hey, it can be me. So. Oh, well, thank you. I, I love you all. You know, come and visit us on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and share your stories because it's a nice, safe place to have fun. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, and come to Mad Monster Party next yes. year. Definitely come back to Mad Monster Party. All right. Thank you, and have a great day. And remember, everybody, stay scared. Mark Patton's a pretty awesome guy. I'm super glad we got to do that interview while at Mad Monster Arizona. And if you guys want to see more from Mr. Patton, they did a full Q&A session at Mad Monster Arizona as well that I'll link to in the last 20 seconds of this video. So make sure you click on that. That'll be over on the Mad Monster channel at youtube.com slash madmonster. And there will be a whole bunch more awesome horror content uh, from their conventions and events that'll be uh, only found there, all exclusive there. Uh, we just got to do our usual celebrity interviews. They allowed us to do that, and then I'm helping them with the YouTube channel as well. So make sure you guys subscribe so you can catch all the Mad Monster goodness in the future. And thank you very much for watching this interview right here. Until next time, remember, stay scared.